The Weston house was bursting with chatter as family and friends enjoyed the meal. Grandma, is there anything you'd like for your birthday? You should have a big celebration for your 80th, Ian asked. Diana shook her head in disgust. After 80 years in a rich family like this, I have everything I could want and more, she thought. Then her lips pursed in a frown and she looked at Madison. The only thing left that I want is to hold my great-grandchild. The problem is that all three of my grandchildren are disappointing me, and I don't know if you'll give me what I want before I die. She sounded helpless, but the look she shot them all was sharp. Madison was included in her harsh appraisal. Madison lowered her eyes and sat quietly. Ian reached for her hand under the table and gave it a comforting squeeze. They both knew some things just couldn't be rushed. Annoyed that she hadn't gotten any reaction from Madison, Diana said to her directly, You've graduated from college now, and you're not going out to work. Take the time to recuperate properly so that you can give Ian a baby. That's the gift I want the most. Madison could only smile and nod. She felt a lot of pressure, but she reassured herself by thinking, It's not uncommon for grandmothers to be overbearing on this subject, but I have to humor her. But Diana wasn't finished yet. I think you should move back in here during this time of recuperation. You need your family looking after you so you don't overtax yourself. When you're better, you can move back to Ian's apartment. Ian, you will pack up her things and bring them here. So Madison doesn't have to go running around all over the place. Diana instructed. All four young people exchanged glances, silently agreeing that this was too much. Grandma, you urged us to get pregnant and then ask us to live apart, Ian said with a frown. Don't you see a bit of a problem with that? Besides, Madison is settled in the apartment now. I don't want to lose her. He was trying to remain polite, but it was clear he meant that Madison would not be moving house. Diana's face became stern. How can a grown-up man like you be so slow to understand? I won't feel at ease unless she's here where I can watch over her. When I know she'll be all right, I'll send her back to you. You make it sound as though I'm trying to break you up. Of course I'm not. You can come and visit. Stop making problems when there are none. No, said Ian, standing up to Diana for once. Madison is my wife. If you're worried, I can make sure she gets good care at home. I'm a doctor, for goodness sake. We are capable of being careful he expressed in an annoyed tone. Diana sneered, but then acquiesced with a shrug. All right, then, as long as you promise that I'll hear good news about your pregnancy before the new year, then I'll give you some space. That's sufficient time, isn't it? Make it your priority. Ideally, you should be a few months gone by then. But if you aren't pregnant, you'll know my displeasure. And you all know what that is like. Daniel and Cassandra exchanged word glances at this bare-faced threat, but Ian agreed with only a slight frown on his face. Madison chewed her lip. I can't get pregnant on a schedule, and on such a tight schedule, too, she thought. Later, back at the apartment, she had just finished showering and was drying her hair when she saw Ian watching a recording of her press conference. With an embarrassed flush, she walked over to turn off the TV but Ian caught her around the waist. She lost her balance and fell onto his lap. Wrapping his arms around her waist, he buried his nose in her hair, inhaling the subtle aroma of flowers, and instantly felt all his stress fall away. He whispered in her ear, Madison, don't feel pressured. Let's just let nature take its course. What I said to Grandma was just because I didn't want to have to stay in the old house alone. I wanted you here in my bed every night. Madison's thoughts changed direction. But what if I can't, if I never managed to get past what happened? I'm relieved he knows about my past. That has made things easier. But the weight of that abuse is still with me, and maybe it always will be. It makes me resistant to getting closer to him, she thought. Having his wife in his arms was a special kind of torture for Ian. I'm going mad from wanting her, but I'll never push her beyond where she's comfortable. But I think she's slowly coming to trust me. We're closer emotionally, and the physical closeness will follow in time, 
he thought. It's all right, he told her. I won't push you. We'll wait until we find a way through. As he spoke to her softly, his lips grazed her neck. Although his eyes were heated, he was careful to observe her reactions. As soon as I see any sign of discomfort, I'll pull back, he decided. As Ian's soft words tickled her ear, she was filled with temptation. Don't hide from me, he murmured. I love being close to you. His teeth scraped her neck lightly and her body went numb. His hot breath froze her. Her hands clenched into fists, but she tried hard not to push him away. If you don't like what I'm doing, just tell me to stop, he said, his breathing uneven. She tried to still her trembling and loosen her tense muscles. While I'm stuck in this place of pain, I'm causing him suffering too. He's not some kind of monk. How can he be okay with this situation, she thought. It seems the two of them were playing with fire and it could easily consume them. She wanted to let herself sink into the perfect atmosphere, to enjoy the romantic setting, the soft lighting. Ian's hand slid beneath her top and she caught it and held him back without any rational thought. Heaving a sigh, she sent him an apologetic look. I still can't. Even though I know intellectually that he won't hurt me, I have this fear response every time, she thought in frustration. Ian went perfectly still and took a deep breath. He gently wrapped his arms around her in a chaste hug and held her against his chest, his breathing gradually settling back to normal. Madison sagged against him, burying her head in his chest and stroking his thick, dark hair. His compassion was so strong she could almost touch it. Sorry, she whispered. Everyone now knows what happened when I was a child, but no one knows the trauma I'm still afflicted with because of it. Even though I'm married and want to have a family with this wonderful man, I'm still tortured by the fear, she mumbled in her head. Sorry, she said again, for what else was there to say? Ian adjusted his position and took her face between both his large palms, looking into her eyes. Leaning forward to gently kiss her lips, he told her, It's okay, I can bear it. The only one who needs to apologize is the monster who hurt you all those years ago. Madison blushed, her guilt washed away by his words. Diana's 80th birthday party was a big deal. It would be a huge event in the city's social calendar, on par with the recent wedding. So it was a great surprise to the family when Ian suggested that Madison should be in charge of organizing it. Normally, it would be the responsibility of the three grandchildren together. Madison was even more shocked by the idea that Daniel and Cassandra were... Madison thought it over for a long time before accepting. It's a big responsibility, but I need to do something to improve my relationship with Diana, she reasoned. So from then on, Ian found that Madison was even busier than him. Every day there was a list of things to organize, from the venue to the decorations, the menu and the guest list. Even at home, he could often hear Madison muttering to herself as she tried to keep her thoughts in order. She could often be found on the phone with Daniel, Paul, or Francis. He was the only one who didn't receive a single call. Madison was buried up to the neck in arrangements. Although she looked tired, she didn't complain at all. Finally, the night before the party, she made the call confirming the last of the arrangements and flopped back on the bed, totally worn out. Ian felt proud of her, but also rather abandoned. He lay beside her and draped an arm over her waist. Are you still very busy? I have been so busy recently. I don't know what Diana likes, so I've had to ask around about everything. She was so tired that she didn't pick up on the undertones of his question. So many people had to be invited, and I had no idea who any of them were. So I had to ask Daniel and Cassandra about each one. I don't want to offend anyone by leaving them out or seating them next to someone that they have a feud with. Suddenly furious about how she had been neglecting him, Ian rolled over and pinned her to the bed with his full weight. His brows climbing up his forehead, he demanded, So you've been busy arranging things for everyone else. What about me? Have you forgotten my needs? Your needs? she asked innocently, her expression full of doubt. What needs do you have? She must have been the only person who wouldn't have known exactly what Ian meant. Frustrated, he groaned and rolled over, putting his back to her. Madison lay there wondering what had just happened for a minute, 
before she slipped an arm over his waist from behind and leaned into his back. Are you annoyed because I didn't have time to make dinner when you got home from work? Ian lay, as stiff as a plank. Is it because you don't like what I'm wearing? She teased, but he didn't laugh. She frowned, serious now, and asked, Is it because I've been neglecting you lately? She held her breath as she waited for him to answer. Surely I'm being a narcissist to think my attention matters to him that much, she thought. Ian didn't reply. He just snorted and remained with his back turned to her. She felt all her good mood from finishing the party planning evaporate. She was too tired of all this drama. With her forehead resting against his spine, she closed her eyes, just for a minute. Ian waited a long time for her to speak again, preferably to apologize, but she was silent. Finally, he looked over his shoulder and found that she'd fallen asleep. Sighing helplessly, he rubbed his forehead. Since when did I become a man who sulks when he doesn't get attention? How can I be so silly? He thought. Looking at Madison's face, relaxed in sleep, he felt all his annoyance drain away.